So very good day to everybody present here and this is introduction to information technology in bioinformatics and genetics. So today's class we will discuss more about ML, okay, machine learning foundations. This is completely a mathematical model, Bayesian modeling and then we discuss about the Cox theorem. It is nothing but the Cox, Jane's axioms and then we discuss about the Bayesian inference and induction about the various model structures. Here in the model structures we discuss about the graphic models and then other tricks okay so this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at tr.christoanand at the rate of gmail.com so before beginning the session let me thank god for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants students and young researchers so today's class we will discuss about the Bayesian modeling in bioinformatics. How the Bayesian networks is going to revolutionize the field of bioinformatics that we would discuss through. And then with the case of Bayesian methods we discuss about the disadvantages or maybe the limiting factors. And then we discuss about uh, Bayesian network and what is the role of protein informatics about the network inference. And then we discuss about the quantitative network models about the BACO model which is nothing but BACCO Bayesian analysis of computer code outputs and then we discuss about the Cox Jane's axioms we discuss about the Cox axiom uh, assumptions and the postulates as well and uh, next we discuss about the inference and induction we already discussed about entropy in the last class so in this particular class we discuss about the maximum entropy we discuss about the graphic models and independence, about the undirected model as well as directed model. We finish today's class. So I have posted the independent works in the Google Classroom. Please complete them at your best available time. And at regular intervals, I will be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics. This is Bayesian modeling. Whenever you are speaking of about Bayesian networks, uh, we generally try to outline the problems that are associated with the molecular functions. So whenever it comes with the computational biology or maybe structural uh, biology, we tend to evaluate the uh, you know categorization of information based on the diseases and here we tend to apply some computational biology concepts in order to uh, you know model these concepts. So whether you take in the case of microarray gene expression or maybe uh, phylogenic uh, analysis whenever you have to uh, analyze with any genes with the DNA, RNA, uh, cRNA uh, sequences then we can use this Bayesian modeling in uh, getting the inference, getting the data out of them. So whether it may be uh, uh, tolerance to the uh, error that we would be finding maybe measurement error or maybe experimental error or maybe any noise maybe Gaussian noise okay we tend to use like a mixture model as well and then with the random variation also we tend to use the Bayesian methods so uh, generally whenever you are going for Bayesian methods you tend to extract uh, more information out of it and uh, whatever the error associated is also is uh, very very much transparent with the help of these methods okay so in comparison to the traditional techniques that we have over the existing system our Bayesian methods uh, are able to perform well with regards to different amounts of data whether it may be simple data or maybe complex data whenever it comes to extracting any information whenever it comes to analysis of any genes definitely our Bayesian methods are much more useful and this is the Bayesian revolution why we call it as Bayesian revolution is that our Bayesian methods are useful in many of the streams. For example, you take in the case of genetics, genes, genomics, proteomes, okay, protein sequences, analysis of uh, you know phylogenetic cells, okay, bioinformatics, computational biology, synthetic biology. Everywhere we are using this Bayesian methods. Okay, so. Uh, the relationship between this bioinformatics as well as the, you know the computational biology together with the application of Bayesian methods definitely it will be helpful to analyze data sequences whether it may be simple data or maybe complex data whether the data is maybe without noise 
or maybe with noise whether it is real data or already feeded data anything can be process with the Bayesian methods okay so the as we can say these Bayesian methods offer a huge advantages over the existing methods and we can be able to get more of the accurate results and this is the Bayesian statistical model as you can see the Bayesian statistical model is fully probabilistic like we have like prior beliefs posterior beliefs and then there is a element of evidence which connects both the prior as well as posterior beliefs okay so here we would be building a statistical model with the advantage of the Bayesian methods so um, yes of course bioinformatics and synthetic biology definitely it helps to provide accurate better solutions but with the advantage of Bayesian methods we are able to still build a more probabilistic model and we can be able to get the accurate results so these are the limiting factors in Bayesian methods so the main uh, limiting factor or maybe some disadvantage is nothing but uh, this method is you know still uh, computational okay so uh, that uh, statistical way of processing or maybe uh, that is more there with the case of Bayesian methods but analytical approach whatever we, we you take in the case of analysis analysis oriented is missing in the Bayesian methods okay but uh, you know whatever it comes with numbers whenever you have to deal with numbers whenever you have to deal with statistics that is a problem in the Bayesian methods okay but uh, it's a relatively fast even even with the modern uh, computational intensive algorithms definitely it is uh, good but analytical procedure that is the disadvantage also the computational feature is the main disadvantage of the Bayesian methods so that is the reason uh, they have developed uh, MCMC which is Markov chain Monte Carlo method Markov chain Monte Carlo method so with the Bayesian method they are introducing this uh, physics statistical physics so when we have the advantage of the statistical physics then definitely our Bayesian methods would perform even more better okay so that is the idea of the MCMC method Markov chain Monte Carlo method and uh, this is the base theorem this is the base theorem from the Bayesian concept so this is what we are going to do we are going to make some inferences about the parameter vector so the parameter vector they have uh, they are designated as phi it is having a probability density model p of y uh, slash uh, phi okay giving rise to a data vector y okay so the base theorem we will have the posterior density pi of phi of y okay which is equal to pi of y into p of y of phi okay divided by p of y okay so this uh, generally you can say it as uh, the base theorem this one the left hand side is actually the posterior density and this uh, we have you know the probability density okay pi of phi okay and this p of y uh, bar phi is nothing but the uh, you know the model the mathematical model that is going to associate and divided by p of y okay p of y is nothing but the uh, uh, posterior factor of the data vector y okay right so this p of y is nothing but the marginal density for y so it is uh, uh, generally obtained by integrating this p factor okay right so since this pi of phi bar y is regarded as a function of phi then generally this uh, pi of phi slash y is proportional to pi of phi multiplied by p of y bar phi okay so that is the way it goes with the base theorem so generally whatever they say like pi of phi bar y is nothing but the posterior density it is proportional to that uh, you know pi of phi model okay multiply by p of y bar phi okay. and this is the Bayesian network uh, uh, generally uh, with the advantage of the statistical physics or uh, Monte Carlo or MCMC solution is uh, considered to be a more advantageous method 
and uh, uh, even to add more statistical feature we can use more graphical models what you call it to be the conditional independence graphs so that is the reason in the Bayesian network we describe a more discrete graphical model and uh, we learn uh, more of the Bayesian network so that is the advantage so when uh, something that is at a disadvantage whenever you are adding more of the statistical physics then definitely it can be helpful to solve any graphical models any biological sequences of complex data so this is an application of uh, the bayesian model the, so this is an application gene microarray data okay so uh, whenever you are analyzing with uh, any data that's okay but the thing is that whenever you have to analyze with more you know micro concepts so definitely our uh, bayesian networks still uh, provides huge advantages also whenever you are going to analyze some statistical features like for example analysis of variance ANOVA that is also a method so what we do you break the bigger problem into smaller number of steps and for each number of steps we are going to categorize the analysis okay for example if we have this particular class 106 and 103 i am breaking the class into 106 and 103 again i am breaking the class of 106 into uh, best students medium students and worst students similarly 103 best medium and worst so for each of the thing i do the analysis whether they are doing the independent works or not they are doing the laboratory works or not they are sitting quiet in the class or not okay so for each of the data i am trying to analyze them and uh, we are going to normalize these data results and uh, we are going to uh, you know compute the results okay so using these bayesian techniques we can build more of the integrated models for analysis of the cdna microarray data sequences and this is protein informatics there are several applications so whenever it comes to uh, matching of the sequences or maybe order of ordering of the sequences or maybe alignment of the sequences definitely our uh, bayesian networks offer a greater advantage so this is one advantage protein informatics or maybe protein to protein interactions from the gene data okay so uh, these protein uh, uh, you know uh, the pro these protein sequences are composed into smaller sequences and from this we tend to apply bayesian networks with the advantage of the statistical physics so with this one we are going to uh, better establish or better get the idea about the protein to protein interactions and uh, also in the case of compu uh, computational systems biology that's also where we tend to use uh, this uh, uh, you know the bioinformatics what you call it to be the you know the bayesian networks so here we tend to use this microarray data actually to uh, establish the sequences of microarray data as well as to establish the protein to protein interactions bayesian networks are useful and this data is very much useful in the computational systems biology as well as in the synthetic biology okay so here in the diagram you will see a neural network okay so where we will have a connection between networks okay right so whenever you have like connections whenever you have interacting patterns okay so uh, we tend to establish uh, you know more of the gene to gene interactions so when you analyze these gene to gene interactions definitely we can use these concepts in applying in the computational systems biology whenever we have microarray data whenever we have uh, simple data whenever we have more of the complex data we can be able to apply them so altogether we can say that this bioinformatics and genetics tend to apply more in the neural networks okay so that is the reason i gave you some independent works about neural networks so that you study about each and every part of them and then you have a base net what you call it with a base network okay so it is nothing but uh, non-statistical com com communities to uh, pro uh, program or maybe uh, model you know the probabilistic graphical models okay so that is the reason you go with discrete ba base network where we will be having like a network of uh, interconnections in order to produce a stable output and uh, graphical uh, models nowadays with the help of base network 
we need not have Bayes method, okay, like Bayesian method, it need not have to, but with the help of this discrete base net, then definitely we are able to know much more information about the variables, how the variables are performing to, whether there is some good interconnection between the variables, whether there is good relationship between the, uh, you know, the interactions, protein to protein interactions and so on. So, for this thing, we need base net, okay, we need not have to access the earlier Bayesian methods and this is the DBN dynamic Bayesian networks so here in the diagram if you see A it corresponds to BN uh, CN and then another one thing BN it corresponds to BT and CN corresponds to CT okay so about the entire information about the system uh, we tend to provide the information and uh, this information that is available, it is available in the, you know, top-down systems, top-to-down systems, okay. So, this dynamic Bayesian networks have been used uh, in the Gaussian mixture model or maybe in the Gaussian model uh, in order to get the information about the network, establish a good relationship between the elements as well as the parameters also, okay, right. So, uh, whenever it comes to Bayesian networks, this dynamic feature is offering a huger advantage we are able to perform faster we are able to establish good relationship also uh, even with the case of complex data it holds really really useful okay but uh, there is some disadvantage of this thing uh, using bayesian inference whenever you have to gather data from multiple sources where that becomes uh, a problem that uh, from different uh, uh, amount of data from different areas that is actually not being explored. So maybe from from uh, limited sources it is okay, it is performing good. But for larger sources it is it is not applied. So that is the maybe a small disadvantage of the dynamic Bayesian networks. Fine. So next we go into the quantitative network model where uh, we will have systems biology where we will establish uh, both a qualitative as well as a quantitative model. So this quantitative network model is all about extending the top down model. Okay, So we extend the features of the top down network model where uh, we parameterize you know uh, whether uh, the non Bayesian approaches are uh, useful or not. Because earlier, if you can remember, starting we used Bayesian methods and afterwards we used Bayesian networks. There is no need of Bayesian methods. Now, we are going to build a quantitative network model where uh, maybe without this Bayesian approach, whether we can build a solution or not. Okay. So, even there is another solution for these networks. We, we call it as ODE, Ordinary Differential Equations. So, that would be also uh, you know addressing the noise modeling as well as parameter uncertainty let us take in the case we are studying in the university the university teachers are providing the services okay okay now let us take in the case we have a pandemic okay do i have to physically come to the university no need maybe i can teach via online mode also okay okay this is also possible okay this is also possible Maybe I can leave this university, maybe I can start a new education center and I can also offer the same services in that center, okay. So, uh, if I am staying in the university, it is all about Bayesian approach. If I am going there, if I am starting a new education center and I'm, if I am providing the same services, that is ordinary differential equations. So, same thing that also is going to give you the service, okay, but only that Change. Uh, change in the method, change in the method is, is what it matters, okay. But also whenever you are going to build this quantitative network model, you are going to extend, you are going to enhance the features of the top down network models. So that is also a greater advantage. Then we have a, a clocks model, CLOCCS, okay, characterizing loss of cell cycle synchrony model. So, here we would be analyzing the loss of synchronization in particular East, okay, East population, okay. So, we would be getting more of the data sets under different climatic conditions, under different situations 
and these models can be you know combined with the population level data in order to you know extract the information and for this case we would be using like detailed modeling where uh, we would be uh, getting you know uh, different amount of data from different amount of sources and also we would be uh, testing their performance okay whether the data we are going to completely extract the information or not so without the loss of data we are we have to get the result and also we have to test the performance so that is nothing but characterizing loss of cell cycle synchrony model so it is all because of synchronization of the models okay. and this is the back of model it is nothing but bayesian analysis of computer code outputs so here we advant have the advantage of the simulation model so whatever may be the models that we have dealt with earlier generally we had some analysis feature sometimes that statistical analysis feature is missing okay but here we have the advantage of the simulation model where we will have statistical features also better relationship between the input and the output the as such uh, we discussed earlier with the case of protein to protein interactions and similarly with the experimental data what are the parameters that are necessary everything we will have here with the bayesian analysis of computer code outputs so here we would be utilizing this in the gaussian processes where uh, we would be using the system biological models uh, along with the computational models but when you tend to use the system biological models along with the computational models uh, definitely whenever you have to analyze more complex data it's not suitable so that is the reason you go for the back out techniques so the better advantage is that for high dimensional input as well as output and as well as the uh, complex dealing of data whether it may be you know variety of uh, computer models definitely our uh, back out techniques are very much advantageous and uh, here we, using the back out techniques we can also tend to uh, you know model the biological sequences as well as i've already discussed about mcmc markov chain monte carlo methods so we can use this uh, stochastic process in the dynamic systems also with the relationship in the dna rna and then crna sequences as well now we go into the cox theorem okay so cox theorem is nothing but something more of the shannon's theorem okay shannon's theorem where uh, we would be calculating the entropy maximum entropy so here uh, the objects that we have to deal with this uh, theorem is nothing but the propositions so for example we consider one example okay a uh, typical proposition x is letter a appears in position no ith position of the sequence o so let us consider a o sequences where we consider you know ith position okay in the ith position the letter a appears okay so a pro pro proposition is either true or maybe false so i'll continue so here actually whenever you are dealing with the you know digital electronics you will have probability either it is true or maybe false one or maybe zero and for the complement case you uh, the complement of one the complement of one is zero the complement of zero is one okay so here the proposition is either true or false here we denote x bar the complement of x and there is a, a hypothesis which is h uh, it is actually a proposition which is actually uh, a complex one composed of conjunction of one or maybe more elementary propositions so here the ma uh, model the mathematical model can be used as a hypothesis and here the complex model can be reduced with the binary proposition in the form of model m accounts for data d with a error error level okay so it's nothing but the you know the uh, relationship between the propositions and how uh, you are going to model these uh, hypothesis with regards to you know the data that you are processing with the uh, almost zero error level okay and then there is degree of confidence so what you have to do in for example let us consider an information i for which we can associate each of the hypothesis 
so here the degree of uh, 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 confidence is nothing but the uh, relationship or maybe the trust that you develop in the belief okay so let us take in the case you represent it by a symbol pi of x bar i okay while x uh, pi of x bar i is actually a symbol so generally we can uh, derive the relationship between two variables one is x and then y and we believe that x is more than y or maybe we believe y is more than x or we believe both of them are same okay x is greater than y as well as y is greater than x okay so these are the cox assumptions we have divisibility and comparability and then we have common sense and then we have consistency so the plausibility is nothing but a real number and it is dependent on the information or the proposition and then we have common sense common sense means uh, based on the real factors based on the real situations so how uh, it is performing according to the uh, you know the assessment okay and then consistency if the plausibility of the proposition can be derived in many ways for example it can be able to extract the information in way uh, in many ways then it is said to be consistent so this is the uh, cox model where you tend to uh, evaluate the outcome here you can see the output is linear which means when the input is increasing the output is also increasing okay and when the input is decreasing the output is also decreasing and then this is the cox notation where we will have like postulates and functional equations here we have you know uh, propositions a and b uh, so a b bar x is equal to g of a bar x comma b bar a x okay and uh, generally the weight factor that are associated is w of a b bar x is equal to w of a bar x multiplied by w of b bar x a x and uh, similarly this one w of b bar x is equal to w of a bar x into w of b bar x okay so this is the thing and then we will have like bayesian inference as well as induction so uh, whenever you have to associate or maybe you have to uh, extract something from the base theorem so this is the priority function p of m bar d is equal to this is where uh, you know somewhat easy p of you tend to take the reciprocal d bar m okay multiply by m okay divided by p p of d okay so maybe you can memorize in this way okay d by m multiply by m you can ca cancel m and m okay in the numerator you have p of d okay but in the denominator also you have p of d so make it in such a way that it is equal to unity okay also you can write it in this way also p of m you take this way p of m okay this factor okay p of m you take this one but first factor p of d by m you take it to the right p of d by m divided by p of d okay so it is nothing but the estimate of the probability that the model m is uh, said to be correct and it is said to be uh, a sense of similarity or maybe a, a, a probability of likelihood okay so p of d by m is nothing but the probability of similarity or probability of likelihood and similarly if you take the logarithmic on both sides so log p of m by d is equal to log p of uh, this one log p of d bar m plus log p of m minus log p of d did you understand this one if, if i take uh, uh, log log on both sides if i take log on both sides what it will become log p of m by d p of m bar d is equal to whenever you have multiplication when you take log what happens it becomes plus you know that if i take log on the right hand side okay you have p of m multiplied by p of d bar, bar m divided by p of d whenever you have multiplication it becomes plus yeah. whenever you have division it becomes minus. minus okay so that is the reason here log p of m bar d is equal to log p of d bar m plus log of p of m minus log p of d okay so we tend to use uh, the priors as a very good advantage because uh, generally it helps us to 
gather much more knowledge about it and uh, generally with the help of prayers uh, we tend to uh, use this in most of the Bayesian networks okay for example uh, we had you know the factor okay like minus log of p d by m that is going to increase with the amount of data that we are going to feed okay while this prior minus log p of m that actually remains stable that remains constant and we have uh, you know some maximum entropy factors as well we can generally infer or maybe categorize most of the priors as well as non-informative priors also and uh, we can gather much of the information even without the knowledge of the priors that that's an advantage also it is easy to model these classes and also we can ca uh, calculate much of the probability function associated with it. and finally we go into the maximum entropy function which is max int principle so here the prior probability assignment uh, should be equal to one with a maximum entropy being constant for whatever the knowledge whatever the constraints that we are going to feed into so this prior distribution you can call it to be the maximally non-committal which means that it has maximum uncertainty maximum level that the problem can occur okay so it, it, the maximum entropy is nothing but the maximum case the problem can occur or maybe maximum case the uncertainty can occur or maybe the maximum of the differences that can occur okay so we can say that there is no information that is available on the parameter w other than the range and uh, max int uh, we will have like distribution p or maybe the histogram function as well so finally we go with this uh, uh, you know the final topic which is nothing but the graphical models as well as other tricks to model structures so um, yes uh, whenever we tend to you know get you know some features you know small uh, data okay then what we do we tend to uh, build some techniques out of the small models that we are going to develop so with the help of these models we can uh, come into uh, some calculations that are associated so that is the reason we model out of the smaller structures okay and with this one we uh, build some graphical models and we tend to develop some probability function so just like in the previous slide we saw p of m uh, i mean bar d okay that is actually the posterior function that is associated so p of d by m is nothing but the likelihood uh, p of m is actually the prior evidence is actually p of d and uh, you can also use these functions for uh, decomposing into smaller sequences right so we have you know independence relations as well and um, uh, generally it can also be developed as a graph where we ha have like probability density function pdf okay so this pdf you can build into you can decompose into smaller smaller functions for each of the functions you can build a graphical models so here in the graph if you are if you have studied you know about graphs uh, you know smaller elements form some clusters okay so that clusters uh, will be forming you know the parts of the graph okay so what we do we categorize these uh, graphical models into two two types one is directed graph and the other one is undirected or maybe indirected graph okay so these undirected graph or maybe undirected edges uh, are generally uh, where the interactions are said to be symmetrical symmetrical means it should follow one particular shape okay so we can use it in the image processing okay for example if you have to build uh, maybe uh, as i told you many many times like for example in the brain for example if you have tumor okay a disease so how you do you do it with points dot 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 dot, dot, dot like this okay you have seen in the kids kids uh, drawing books have you seen like joining the dots like dot 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 so only when you try to join the dots you can get the picture okay that is where you tend to apply in the image processing or maybe statistical mechanics okay and these models you can call it to be the markov random field or maybe boltzmann machine or maybe markov networks or maybe log linear models also but directed models as the name implies it is just the 
opposite meaning okay which means that the interactions are not symmetric and they do not have a good causal relationship causal relationship you know the meaning of causal causal you don't know causal means uh, the output should follow the input the output should follow the input whatever input i am giving the output should be linear okay right so that is causal relationship uh, so it is not symmetric and there is no causal relationship or there is no time irreversibility okay so that is the reason maybe for this case for signal processing they tend to use kalman filter for reducing the noises okay so this is the independent work i have already given them in the google classroom please complete them hidden markov models application protein applications dna as well as rna applications please complete them at your best available time and submit them as soon as possible